Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Screaming Chewy Show. And I'd like to welcome back Roderick Edwards. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, in the person, in the flesh. In the flesh, man. So how you been, yo? Being doing all right here in Florida. Getting hotter and hotter all the time, though. How about over there in the West? Dude, it's already like fucking 105. <laughs> but it's okay. Like they say, it's a dry heat. <laughs> Yeah, it's just humid, so it's not really dry. It's, it's always... And then the mosquitoes come out at night because they're stuck inside, so... Oh, fuck that. You don't have the mosquitoes, the killer mosquitoes that take off small babies and stuff. You, can, you see little chihuahuas being carried down the street by the, by the mosquitoes. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like in uh, that game... Uh, <laughs> Ar- uh, what was this? Sur- Evolve Survival? Arc Survival, when, they, when the birds carry things away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, man, um, you know, like I said, I love your books, and we've talked a lot about them, and um, I'd like to talk about, you know, very, I, th- I find it very interesting, uh, your whole life story, you know, how you just, uh, ju- you spent your whole life just searching, right? Yeah. Um, I was raised by wolves, I think. <laughs> in a cave? <laughs> yeah, in a cave. And some guy there, his name was... Oh, obscene or something. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Bama Suma. He was there in the cave. Just a little boy at the time. Kept picking his nose, though. Damn, you need to quit picking your nose, dude. Used to beat him up all the time. He's a little punk. <laughs> he was digging for gold and you beat him up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, I think it's... So, uh, do you think searching for answers your whole life, I mean, that's what inspired you to write most of your books, right? Or at least this one we're going to discuss? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, anybody's listened to previous shows realizes I was adopted. So, at age four, and this has a profound effect on most, most people who are adopted. If you ever interact with a group of adopted people, they'll tell you the same story over. It's almost like you're an observer in somebody else's life. Because you don't have any foundation. So even though you're adopted, maybe your family's nice, your adopted family, they treat you perfect. You know, it's a millionaire. Maybe you get adopted into Trump family or something and everything's perfect. But you still feel out of place. And so no matter what, you're still looking to see, well, who am I? And you'll see people on the street and you're like, well, does that person kind of look like me? And you think, is that, is that my relative? And you're constantly doing that to yourself. And so that's the problem. That's crazy. Foundation. And, um, you know, uh, I was listening to this other podcast and they're talking about abortion and they're saying it's better to abort the baby than to put it up for adoption. I'm like, I don't know, dude, like that's fucked up, you know? <laughs> no. See, I, w- I went to an adoption conference a couple years ago, right, right after I found, and there were some birth mothers who gave up their kids for adoption talking. And I said to them, because I was still looking for my uh, adoptive sister, my 100% sister, because I only have one sister who, or one relative who's by the same father and mother. The rest of them are half. So, but anyhow, and they were saying, well, you know, adoption would have been a better, or abortion would have been a better option because you wouldn't have known it. I said, if I would have found out that my mother had aborted my, my only sister that I had, that would have pissed me off. Fuck yeah. I mean, she was adopted out too, to another family and, and lived all her life without knowing me. But if I'd been found out that I had another sister, but that she'd been aborted, I'd been really upset. So abortion is not a good thing either. I would rather have been this. Obviously, you can't say that because you don't know what you would have thought because you're dead if you're aborted. Well, I know as a human being, I'd rather be alive no matter what the circumstance. At least I have a chance to do something. Yes, there's pain, but everybody has that. I mean, look at all the damn tattoos you have. I bet that hurt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were held down against your will and all that shit was put on you. I mean, that was awful. I bled for these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and you still experience life, you know? That's the most yeah, important anyway, part. You never know what somebody's going to contribute to to society. You can't say, well, this person's life's not worth, you know, they're never going to amount to anything because they started so far back, blah, blah, blah. I mean, for instance, uh, I think Gerald Ford was adopted, and he became president, you know? I think uh, Clinton was adopted by, his, like, stepdad, but still he was adopted, not so much straight out, but these are adopted people that made a significant difference. So, for sure, and and if and if you were aborted, we wouldn't know how to overthrow a government. You know? Yeah, yeah, we got to overthrow the government. 
Here's the book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to send a whole bunch of copies to Minneapolis, but I think they're too busy looting the, the liquor store. <laughs> Justice means looting liquor stores. We'll get into that later. I don't want to talk yeah. about the detail. I seen they burned down the police station. I was like, revolution. That there, I mean, I've I've talked about this before. Look, if if there is a legitimate reason, which is a legitimate reason, they should not have done that to that dude. Tell them down like that video, you know, that George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to respond to that kind of injustice, maybe you should take on the government, not the the guy's liquor store that he's or the guy's restaurant or the guy's bar or whatever. Don't burn that shit down. I mean, if you're going to attack, be bold and burn down the police station. At least they did it this time. I agree with that. Now, people want to say, well, they shouldn't do anything. Well, if you're going to do that, if you're going to respond, at least target the people you think actually did the injustice, not people who had nothing to do with it. So. I fully agree, man. They even targeted Target. Yeah, well, I was looking at a list. They had a list of 100 different places, and the majority of them were liquor stores and tobacco stores. Wow, that's yeah, fucked up. There's like a hundred of them. Like, really, dudes? Come on. That doesn't mean justice. That means, hey, it got me with some... Revolution! Let's steal all the liquor! <laughs> <laughs> so, that's not it at all. Yeah, man. So, uh, so you spent your whole life, uh, you know, just living, and then um, you were looking for your adopted parents and your siblings, right? Yeah, well, often on, off and on, I, I, most adopted kids will, especially back when, before the internet existed, we, we would look, we would look around, we would try to see what there, but there really wasn't any legal means to figure that out, because the closed adoptions in most states means, you know, you get adopted by somebody, you never get to know who your parents are, they're not going to look for you, you're not going to look for them, nobody's going to tell you. Sometimes the adopted parents don't even tell you that you were adopted. Fortunately, mine did. Um, but... Not until 2018 when Indiana, where I was from, changed the law where basically I sent in a form and they said that if your parents are either deceased or agree to it, you can have your birth records released to you. So when I did that, they were released to me. I found out my birth certificate in my mother's name and within a few hours, I found out my half siblings. I found two or three of them within just a few hours of that. Getting wow. That. So, but yeah, there's no legal means most of the time. And you're, so you just go through life going, well, who am I? Then you just make up a life. You go, okay, well, I guess this is who I'll be. And people say, well, that happens to everybody. We all have to decide who we're going to be, but not necessarily because people who have a firm foundation of who they are heritage wise, you know, obviously you have some Mexican background. So that builds into who you are as Chewy, you know, my name, I, I didn't have a name at birth. So even my name doesn't mean anything to me especially my last name. People, when my, people say my last name nowadays, I'm like, Edwards, who's Edwards? It's confusing to me because I usually just use Roderick E because I don't care about the last part. I just care about the first part. So, Wow, that's, I never thought of it that way. That's yeah, that means, your whole identity is stolen from you. So, but tomorrow, somehow, you, some white rape van drove up to your house and threw you in there and they took you somewhere. Well, hey, your name's going to be Alfred now. Nope, nobody's gonna call you Chew anymore, and you're gonna wear uh, you're gonna wear eyesides, and you know we're gonna remove all those tattoos and everything else. I'm gonna teach you how to speak like a how would you do your little English turtle thing? That's how you're gonna do from now on. <laughs> you change your ID, that would be foreign to you. Very true. And so. if they did kidnap you, you'd probably be with tacos. We'll say free <laughs> tacos. Yeah, instead of candy in the Mexican neighborhoods, the uh, rape guy drives around. Hey, little kid, you want a taco? <laughs> That's not right. You had me at tacos. <laughs> at least it wouldn't work because that's a white person's taco. I mean, taco Bell tacos. And then when you go in there. I'm like, you got flour tortilla on a taco. This is not right. <laughs> that's, not, that's not green salsa. That's red salsa. I don't eat no red salsa. Hey, you lie to me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. The, so, the, one of the first books, as we said, was the, uh, that talks about that adoption stories and together more one. And it's, it's actually been, you, know, you read that one, but it's actually been a very controversial book because I named names in there. I probably, in retrospect, should not have. Oh. And so, I mean, it's just first names. Is that legal trouble or just like No, it's, it shouldn't be legal trouble because, one, it's first names, and plus it's a biographic, so it's my life. I get to decide. I mean, anytime, like, if I wrote a book now, I'm going to write a book that your name's going to Chewy would be in there if I wanted to. Even if I wrote something negative, hey, this guy's got, you know, he's got these headphones on and they're kind of tilted back crazy. 
Yeah. What about, I mean, unless you're an idiot, you probably say, okay, that's okay. That's true. And I didn't slander anybody. I didn't lie about anybody. I just told them how they affected my life. But some people, I didn't want you to do that unless you tell me I can do that. Well, you know, it happens all the time. So anyhow, the book is about my life and how it got to this point and everything else. So it's, it's interesting, I think. Very interesting. And so it seems about the, the time you started investigating or when the records were released, that's around when you started writing, right? Well, I've been writing all my life, but I never really published anything. I mean, because I've been writing since I was in seventh grade. I was, I don't know, it's probably the only thing I excelled at. I didn't, I'm almost a little dude, so I didn't really excel at sports, except for dodgeball. I'm pretty good at that. Can't hit me. But, you know, I wasn't good at basketball or anything else, so I was, I was a little nerd, and writing was interesting to me. So I always wrote in journals and everything else, but not until, like you said, at that, that time did I start publishing. And the publishing of the first book, oddly enough, was this book here about preterism. We haven't talked about it. It's about a religious movement about that believes Jesus already came back in eighty seventy. And I've been writing it for a while and planned to publish it, but I just lost interest in it. So when I came down to live with my sister, my one hundred percent sibling sister in Florida, I decided to take some time and finish it. And then once I did that, I started they started pumping out all the other ones. You put in some work, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, for how fast you did them, I mean, you do really good, man. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to keep them short. Most of the books are like 120 pages or, or less, but that's a two-hour audio. You know, that's that's about the length of a movie. So who wants to invest any more time than two hours, typically, listening to anything or anything like that? So. Yeah, I really like the audio for the, um, the universe. The universe, oh. yeah that one yeah man you got that one in paperback right um I, paperback? I think i got it in a audio book oh, okay well it comes with all these p fancy pictures if you got it to see <laughs> <laughs> you should make a coloring book separately oh uh, the universe coloring book <laughs> or you're this little spot oh no wait that's fleet that's that's fly shit that out there <laughs> connect stars <laughs> yeah man and um so uh growing up and uh like did you ever like imagine what your siblings are doing or something because i know i'd be doing that you know well the odd thing was i wasn't really ever thinking but ever thinking about siblings i was always only thinking about parents that's weird because when i found i wasn't for some reason you don't I didn't think of oh I need siblings because I was adopted into a family that had four other kids well the time they procreated that for the kids they had two older daughters so the story is when I was four years old I'm in Indiana and the first memory I have was being in a car the very first memory I don't know what's your first memory can you remember that damn how far back in hell were you about I think I was like five I remember being at the beach I remember being at the zoo in California, but I think that's the earliest I could remember, like five years old, somewhere around there. Were well, you climbing over a gorilla enclosure or anything? Are you at the zoo? Harambe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm four years old, and I remember being in a car, and I had that chewing gum, this stick kind, and I'm going on my way to to be to my adoptive family, and I'm supposed to save this gum for them, just like a little present. But I'm so nervous, I'm opening up every one of them, I chew up every one of them and throw all the, the, wrap, the foil wrappers on the floor. And then I look over at the lady, I said, do you think they're gonna be mad I chewed all the gum? She's like, no, they'll be okay with it. So that's my very first memory. Wow. Yeah. And so the sad part of it, and I don't want anybody to pity, but the sad part is, so I was four, but by the time I was seven, the parents had, had divorced. And this is, the, this is the stuff that's in the book. It's really hard stuff, but anyhow, she, the adoptive mother, was basically a whore. She whored around. Men would call from a motel and say, hey, come get your wife. I'm done with her. And so the, What? Yeah. So the adoptive dad eventually became an alcoholic. I mean, who wouldn't with that kind of stuff? Became an alcoholic. The whole thing fell apart by the time. So the happy family I was adopted into, that they gave me to, fell apart within three years. Wow, dude. That's some heavy shit, man. Yeah. So from that, that, from that point on, 
he moved out after he got divorced and she went to work at a bar. I think she might've already been working at a bar, but yeah, she went to work at a bar. So I hardly ever saw her. The only time I ever saw her when she came home really late at night at two o'clock in the morning, usually with some dude locked in her bedroom. And then a lot of times she would make me watch my two younger siblings and sometimes missing school for that fact. I'd have to miss school because I'd have to stay home and watch them. Damn, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, so that, that's what went on. So I basically raised my two younger siblings and raised myself from age, what, five or so? Or no, seven, seven or so on because she was never around. So you had to grow fast. Yeah. So that's kind of the backstory of my youth. So there's not too much for there. But it toughened you up, though. Yeah, well, definitely, you know, obviously you see things and things happen to you that in, in, in any situation that you have to figure out how, it, how life works quickly. Otherwise, you, you end up in a uh, mental ward or prison. It's the same survive. You know, you, you got to adapt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you turned out very well. I mean, you, you, you know, considering the circumstances, you didn't grow up into a horror or alcoholic, you know, so you no. did pretty well. Yeah. Well, what's what I always would tell my daughter's um, friends, I'd say, look, I don't care what your upbringing was, no matter how bad it is, at some point in your life, you say, I have to say, what do I want to be? I don't care if your you know, parents were abusive or murderers or whatever they were, you have to say, well, who do I want to be? So that, that's kind of my philosophy that I went by in my own life. It's like, okay, I'm not going to be an alcoholic. I'm not going to be a, a criminal or anything like that. I'm going to try to do something worthwhile. I love that. That's a very good question to ask yourself, too. Who do I mm -hmm. want to be? Wow. Yeah. yeah. You should go to, like, youth groups, bro, and <laughs> tell them that. Talk. I, gotta, I don't have any fancy ties. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do it without fancy ties. You got to get all the, rid of this because they're not going to accept this nowadays. Put a clip on. Yeah. And then they see these big-ass lips, and they say, damn, what the hell's wrong with that guy? <laughs> so it's not going to work. So that's the reason why I write, because people can't see me. I got, got fake pictures in the back. See, look, see, that one's, that's not, <laughs> that's not me. That's a fake guy right there. Uh, there's, that's kind of me, but when I was younger. Oh, shit, man. That's the white prince right there. Styling. Mm-hmm. On here's one, that's the same one. So. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you had the pictures. Yeah. So there's there's the 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 childhood, and then the book again, this together more book. What happened is because I was so adamant of not living a chaotic life and bringing order to my life, considering as an adopted person, you have chaos. In the book, I talk about how I met my wife at age sixteen, and she was fourteen. We married by the time I was twenty-one, and stayed married for what thirty years. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, so in that whole time, I made a really consistent life. I worked jobs that I was consistent at, tried not to, you know, rock the boat, tried to be a straight shooter. I was a data analyst, so a really boring job that I told you once before. And, but the problem was, as an adopted person, again, you choose a life, and it, it wasn't really me. It wasn't the person who was really inside. It was this robot, this person that didn't exist. And so once, once I found my family, something happened and I kind of feel bad for the people who were in my life, but basically I went crazy. If you want to call it that to some degree, it was like, he went crazy. But I decided to be myself. I decided to write books. I decided to do art. I decided to, to, to let myself be who I wanted to be. And maybe I'm still doing that to some degree. And that kind of upset people who were used to me being the, the straight shooter, the guy who you always know, who's always going to do this and you can predict. I used to call it uh, being the savior that's not nailed on the cross. Wow. It's like a Jesus who walks around, but instead of getting nailed to a cross for your sins, daily he just walks around and, and fixes stuff for you and, and is there for you to, to bash and, and lean on. And that's kind of who I felt like. I was just, I wasn't living my life. I was living their life for them. You weren't living for yourself, huh? Yeah. Damn, man. I'm glad yeah. you woke up. Yeah, well, it, it's, I told people this is the most, ha the happiest, most, the most happy time of my life, it's also the most sad time because of the fact that I did build up this structure. But all the people that I build that structure up for can survive without me because I built, it's almost perfect world. Every time my family would come around, they go, my adoptive, my uh, birth family, they go, wow, you, 
you have this five bedroom, 3,100 square foot house and this pool in the backyard. This is what all I had, by the way. I had all this stuff and this perfect job and went on vacation to Hawaii and all this other stuff all the time. Well, I gave all that up. Not that I live in poverty or anything now, but I just gave that all up because I didn't want to do that anymore. I actually don't want all the debts and anything else. So, Was it for you? Well, no, not, it isn't for me now. I mean, it's who I am. I want to, I want to live most un, unencumbered as I can now. And I, I think you could probably could live and get away with $10,000 a year if I had to. Nice. Be like a minimalist, right? Yeah, real minimal. And, um, you know, I think that's pretty cool that, you know, because I mean, it kind of sounds selfish, but when you think about it, it's your life, you know? And if you're not happy, I mean, you, you did something about that. And the people that weren't happy about you being yourself, you know, it seems like maybe they were just happy that you were helping them or whatever, you know? I struggle with that even today because, yes, I have some people, like you're just saying, in this one ear saying, you know, you got to do it happy for yourself. You only have one life, blah, blah, blah. Then I have some of my – I wasn't raised Christian, but I became a Christian at age 16 and was Christian for – well, almost 30 years, basically the whole time I was married, but having this side voice going, you got to self-sacrifice. You got to sacrifice yourself for other people, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I hear both these voices and I'm trying to decide, am I selfish? However, I only do have one life. Now, what I've been trying to tell people is like, look, I'm going to live my life. However, I'm not going to shut anybody out. If you want to be part of it, I welcome you into it. But some people from the previous life won't they won't, you know, they won't abide by that. You're somebody different now. We don't want anything to do with that. No, I'm still me, but I'm actually even more me than I was before. Don't you want to be part of that? And some of them are no. They're, they cut me off completely. They Friends, should be happy. Yeah, they're not. Some of them are not. So. But that's life. You know, you just learn the real people that are there for you. and It's a learning process, you know? Yeah. It's like the chewy. It's a shall I lay down on the couch. It's a chewy. <laughs> it all started when I was four years old. So how does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing crossword puzzles. <laughs> Not even care. What'd you say? Here, take, take, what, which time yet? Take this medication. <laughs> COVID. It's a COVID. Who does it say COVID on it for? <laughs> your, your problems would be over in about get the incubation time going <laughs> that's not right yeah spell it kobe 19 yeah i won't even know so here we are now i'm i was it i was born and raised in indiana so a hoosier and my sister was born and raised in indiana the adoptable the one that the 100 percent sister but she lived more of a she was just the opposite of me so she lived a very exciting and chaotic life it was even chaotic so whereas i lived a kind of a stable but dead life because i everything was predictable everybody could count on me everything was as they can imagine hers was well she went here she went there she had three kids by a couple i think two guys yeah two guys but she's very intelligent she's very witty she's very imaginative just like i am but she let herself loose she she lived life despite what people would tell her. She didn't try to be everybody's sacrifice. And so I used to say to my other half siblings that I needed a little bit of her chaos and she needed a little bit of my order. So I've moved down here to be with the only other person who is my 100% relative and the only other person who lived this kind of life and understands what I'm talking about completely. No matter how much you tell somebody, they can't understand completely what it means to be adopted. Mm -hmm. Imagine a little bit, but not completely. And so here I am down in Florida now, in the middle of the middle of Florida, which is Ocala. It's basically a bunch of pine trees and uh, horse farms for miles. It takes 35 minutes just to get to the closest Walmart. Wow. I'm in the middle of nowhere, which I love because it's seclusion. And we bought some more properties. So like you said in some previous interviews, we are building uh, an orchard and a big 30 foot by 30 foot garden and all these different things. And this is kind of what I wanted to do and live my life off the grid as much as possible. Got the RV, which we plan on taking out here soon. Again, there'll be a book about that. The RV adventures of some sort. Oh shit. To slab city. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> slab city. 
hey, just be careful about living off the land. It might be another Ruby Ridge. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't have any kids. You don't need to burn us all up. <laughs> For the safety of the kids, we got to burn all of you. So wrong. Texas thing. They could have got that guy at any point. Instead, they waited until he was bunkered in. Then they burnt the whole damn place down and killed some of the kids in it. So. And then deny they burnt it down, even though there was proof that. Yes, yeah. we're guys. watching it live. Here's the little tank that you got going through there, shooting fire out the muzzle. <laughs> Hey, man, so where you're at, there's a lot of land. It, it seems like a perfect place to put, like, a little shooting range in your backyard or something. Yeah, well, actually, every day, every night, somebody's shooting, but they're usually shooting in the forest, which is, like, less than 100 feet away. I don't know if I can get away. I might be able to get away with shooting the gun in the backyard. I have a little 22 that sounds like a BB gun, so I could probably get away with that until you start seeing the semi on it. <laughs> every day, there's, every night, you'll hear somebody shooting something around here holy shit like hunting or just just yeah, fucking around? I, they must be not hunting because some of them are automatics they must have bump stocks or something because you can hear it so i don't think they're shooting anybody they're probably just messing around in the forest it's, like i said this forest is it's four hundred and fifty thousand square feet or square square uh acres of forest here it's huge and it's all like uh there's a lot of wild animals too right a lot of snakes and crocodiles there's bears and uh yeah, Black Panthers in there. Not Black Panthers like, yo, what's up, man? Black Panthers like, just so you know. I want to clarify that for your, that there's no racial intent there. I don't want to say that there's Black people living in the forest. That's <laughs> wrong, I think. I'm not saying that. It's not the gang, the Black Panthers. It's, yeah, it's, you need to put like a disclaimer up here in the corner. The Chewy Show does not, you know, recommend this content. <laughs> Click to see, to see offensive content. It's funny. You're like, dude, there's Black Panthers in the forest. You go there expecting to see a beautiful animal or something, and it's a game. <laughs> yeah, man, what's up? All sitting around a fire, smoking weed. Welcome to the Black Panthers. <laughs> hey, that's the gunshots you're hearing, bro. <laughs> man, and um, yeah, that's yeah, I I'm trying to imagine like your life, you know what I mean? Like it's it's pretty crazy how your your sister your your real sister how you say you have similar personalities but she lived her life like um you know she just let loose you know yeah she lived the opposite i mean i'm not saying she's a bad person or saying i'm just trying to say she lived life i kind of focused on living life for other people she lived life for herself as much as she could and the reason i think there's this certain certain characteristics that are built into you, whether it's their DNA. We joke all the time because we found out, this is the reason you got these big lips. I am not, I don't have even an ounce of African-American blood in me. I am 100%, if anything, Viking. Well, yeah. Skull. So I think we have that same rebellious, you know, I'm going to kick your ass attitude. And she's had it too. And I've had to put the strain that a lot in my life. I've quit jobs because people say, you gonna say crazy shit to me like that? I've quit them. I try not to be chaotic, but I have been occasionally chaotic. And when I am, it shocks people. Whereas she didn't hold back any time. People say some crazy stuff. Okay, goodbye. You know, so there we got this going on and this same thought patterns. Like the first time was when I told her, I said, you know what? We're sitting around talking. I'm like, you know what I'd like to do now that we're free of everything and we only have so many years left? Because technically I have what? I'm 30, I'm 51, so I have what, 30 years tops. Most people won't live past 80 some odd years, most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was saying, why don't we get an RV? And she's like, I've always wanted to do that. And so sure enough, we went out looking around and finally found this RV for what, eight thousand dollars, something like that, and purchased it and we're going, we're gonna drive it everywhere. Maybe even to Slab City or through your western town. Dude, fuck yeah, dude, that'd be fucking awesome. You definitely yeah, gotta table, record that. Yeah, on tape a live show there on on, on the premises. Dude, fuck yeah, dude. In the RV. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta make a show, dude. Name it. Fucking Rod's RV Adventures. Yeah. I am actually like I said, I'm writing a book and it's seven chapters in already. It's really it's very boring, but I want it to be a series of books, possibly the RV Adventures. We haven't gotten any further than around here in Florida, so at some point we're going to get further. 
Right now, it's just the beginning. Yep, just the beginning. So what would be your first stop after Florida in the RV? Well, this is still Florida, but I think it'd be cool to go to the Keys in the RV. Have you ever been to the Keys? Nope. So you basically have to drive through, from what I'm seeing on the map, you have to drive through all these just little tiny island islands, not islets or what do you call them. Basically, it's just the highway you jump to here, and the highway you jump to there. You're basically, out in the middle of the ocean most of the time because it's it was an old railroad a long time ago that led down to the Keys. So I want to do that. And then I also want to go west. I don't know how far west. I think the Grand Canyon would be cool. You've been there before? Nope. I, I live <laughs> in the Grand Canyon State and never been there. <laughs> I know you don't get you don't get out. You got a warrant or something you want to share with us now? Uh hey, wait, fifth. Let, let's see your ankle. You got a bracelet on there, buddy? Oh <laughs> um, I cut it off yesterday. No. <laughs> Oh, no wonder you're in jail with Facebook. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, that happened this morning. Fuck, man. That happen? What'd you say? I looked, I was looking back through your post. I was like, I don't see anything offensive. Not any more than it normally is. Well, so I'm in this private group that's like for like offensive memes. And somebody's like, Put, post your most offensive meme. And I did. And right away, I got fucking banned. Really? From Facebook itself? Yup. Like, it didn't say nobody reported me. It just says, it goes against our community standards. I'm like, son of a bitch. Instantly. Would you like to, sh would you like to share what this meme was? I I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. It's fucked up. <laughs> well, most of my most of my time that I get, and I've probably been in Facebook jail five, six, seven, eight times. Who knows how many times over the course of been on Facebook? But it's usually from political stuff. Like I just got off Twitter. I got banned Twitter. Because I basically was responding to Joe Biden wearing his mask and how people were saying he looks like a leader. Well, he didn't look like a leader. I don't care if you support him or not. You, you look like a freak. Black glasses. You look like this. You look like this, seriously. I'm Joe Biden. <laughs> hey, now you got to say nonsense. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the last one to tell us. I want you to tell me, can I sniff your children? I just want to tell you, you know, you know. But anyhow, I just said it. You know, he looked like a, he didn't look like a leader. He looks like a pansy. And so they said it was, you know, I was making fun of homosexuals. I said, you do realize pansy just means delicate flower. I don't, obviously, I don't think Joe Biden's homosexual. I just said he looks like a weak person. He looks weak. I say, that's you're making fun of people's sexual orientation. No, I'm not. Matter of fact, did you know LGBTQ, the Q and that stands for queer, and that's actually a slur, but yet you guys have no problem with that? Oh, fuck, I never thought about that. Yeah, well, it's okay if they call themselves queer, but you're not allowed. To, I'm not even calling them that. You people are, and you have no problem with it. I didn't call anybody any names to pansy, which just means delicate. That's all it means. Can't even, these people are too delicate. They're all pansies. Yeah. <laughs> crazy so they reported you so they reported me and banned me from from twitter for what 16 hours damn for saying the word pansy it's fucking happening everywhere man you know like you were talking about i think it was when we did uh how to overthrow government you were talking about deplatforming. yeah that's happening like crazy now yeah well, i know they say well what the thing is is it's a private business and you already see their their uh contract and what their their criteria before you sign on and you know what to expect well, well the problem one of the problems are they don't they're not consistent they'll sit there and let one person say crazy 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 stuff and then do nothing to them and then you say something just as crazy maybe i don't know and they they ban you it's not consistent and then when you look at who they have in charge of that kind of stuff you're like really that person that person the guy with the plaid pants in the book. no yeah like uh apple and spotify they're taking down a lot of podcasts if they mention things about covid19 even in the title description or even the content itself so i don't know if there's people listening just to report but yeah, i'm sure they have algorithms and some of that stuff but there could be people listening to report somebody made a good example it'd be like the phone company listening into your conversation with somebody else and decide they didn't like it, even though it's the phone company that you don't have a right to a phone. It is a private, it's a private company. And then them saying, well, we're going to shut your phone service off because you said stuff on your phone that we didn't like. What the hell? That, that's a good way to put it. That's yeah, a that's, good analogy. 
I thought it was a good announcement because it is a private company and they could do what they want. If you're if you're saying things on the phone they don't like, they could say we don't like it. And I think we need a free forum, a forum where basically, okay, you know, as long as you're not threatening somebody's life or something like that or stalking them, you can say whatever the hell you want, no matter how offensive it is. Dude, we should start that. <laughs> There's a couple of them starting. There's that one I'm on right now. I'm testing. It's called uh, not to. They're not. I'm not no, no, I'm not getting any money from these guys, but it's parlor, uh, parlor.com. It's like a Twitter. I'm trying. It seems pretty good. I have to check it out. Parlor.com. Yeah, which obviously is a play on the word uh, parlay, which is, you know, French or Latin for speak. You know, and it's like a free for all. It's so, so far, they don't really ban anything that I see. I don't see anybody saying anything crazy like I'm going to kill anybody. It's just, they say, Things that you on Twitter you get banned for, like pansy. It's just a pansy free zone. It's a, you can, yeah, you can say pansy all you want. I like it. Not that I'm gonna go on there just to say pansy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> or post your meme. Oh my god, dude! Watch, I'll send it to you. You're gonna be like, wow. That's uh, how you can test it. Go on there and post a meme and see if you get banned. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think, man. <laughs> I've been messing around with Reddit, but man, I find it confusing. Oh no, they're even worse. There's snobs there. I was on Reddit for a while too. You didn't post exactly what we said. You didn't have so many up likes and everything else before you posted this. I'm like, come on. It, it reminds me of high school clicks. You know, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to be in our little club over here unless you wear the right kind of. Sh you don't have an eyes eye with the little alligator over here. I don't know if you're from that era, but my era, you had to have the polo emblem eyes eye on your shirt. And if you didn't, you get some generic thing, you know, like a little, like, what is it, Captain Kangaroo over here or something, instead of the alligator, you weren't part of the cool kids. Oh, I remember the little alligator. Yeah, the eyes, eyes, and the polo, and they had the collars. I hardly ever wear collared shirts anymore, but if you didn't have those, and you had to turn them up. If you wanted to be really cool, you turned them up. Damn, I remember that in, like, early 2000s. Yeah, it looks like you, all these trends recycle themselves, but. I was never really part of any of that. And that's what it feels like to me. It feels like it's the same stuff. Like, you're not part of our group unless you do everything we want to say. You got to say, you got to say fawning things about a little girl over there with blonde hair or whatever. Like on Reddit, I tried to comment or post on one of them. And it said, you are not allowed to comment. I'm like, what the fuck? It didn't even say why. You probably, most of the time, you have to have gotten so many up likes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, all these approval. So the up likes makes you more your comment more popular, so you, more people see it. Is that how it that allows works? you it allows you to comment more because basically you have to get people who care about what you say. So if you get say something somewhere, even if it's just your own post, and people like it, then you're allowed to participate more. That's kind of fucked up. It's like the yeah. job that like when you come out of high school, and they're like, you need ten years experience to start. <laughs> I just started. Yeah. And then you start lying about what experience you have. Yeah, I've been a CEO of my own company for 20 years, but you're only 25. <laughs> I started young. Yeah. It, was a, it was a diaper company. Oh, man. So, Rod, what, what about uh, after the Florida Keys? Where are you going after that? Well, I, I mean, want to go. You mentioned Grand right. Canyon, but I want to go west. So uh, west and through possibly the the close to the Rockies. I don't want to know if I want to drive an RV through the mountains though. It looks a little scary, uh, especially oh. fairly old. But I do want to go that way because the only farthest west I've been is Texas and Oklahoma, and barely just stopped through there. I didn't really was going uh, Louisiana. I've been through there a little bit. That was scary. Because it had all those huge pine trees where I was. And then there was, as soon as they cleared out, there was this like little, I don't know, it was a Cajun. It was like this little biker bar. And I'm like, damn, that's scary. You go there, you never come back out. <laughs> They're like, you got part of math. Yeah. <laughs> um, like three hours from here, there's these small towns like called uh, Sholo and Pine Top and Lakeside. And it, they call it the White Mountains. It's fucking beautiful up there. I've been there a couple times. It's all like pine, pines and uh, lakes. Fucking beautiful. Nice. Now I do worry about two things. One, 
because I obviously have my sister in tow. Um, that's somebody else you have to worry about besides yourself. And secondly, it's really annoying enough to launch into this too much, but I can't carry a gun in every state I'm going through, obviously, which is annoying. The Second Amendment says I can carry a gun wherever I, you know, for my defense. So here I'm going through all these states in places I won't even know where I'm going until I get there and could be dangerous. You know, I don't know. And yet I'm not allowed to defend myself, so. Yeah, um, I used to work with a guy, you know, he was really into guns. And uh, he got pulled over in California. And the cop told him, the reason I pulled you over is because I saw Arizona plates. He's like, I know you guys carry guns. He's like, where is it? Not right. And then, so he, what, did he search his car or something? Yeah, he searched his car, but he didn't have a gun on him. Because he yeah. knew he was, he was going to California, you know, so he didn't take nothing. Well, the RV is going to be a little easier to conceal stuff, I imagine, because I, you know, all kinds of compartments and everything else. And I'm working on the, lifting the floorboards up and I'm putting the automatic machine gun under there and all that. So once we get that all set up. Damn, and all your... He's shaking his head like I'm serious. All your stacks of cash you had <laughs> in, your, in your cave. Yep. And that little Osama's grandchild under there, too. <laughs> no dumbass. I was sawed off shotgun in the floorboards. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you should uh, put spikes and stuff on that RV, yo. Mad Max. Yeah. Scare people away. That'll probably get me pulled over more often than not. <laughs> Hell this. Man. And, uh, man, uh, so yo, you got another book coming out, right? Um, I got a couple books I'm working on. One's a really boring Excel book. Well, boring for people who don't like Excel, but... Because I was a data analyst and did Excel, not just the formulas where if you ever did it, you know, A plus A1 plus B1 equals whatever, use Excel, most people know that. But what I did, it's called VBA, it's the coding behind Excel. So it allows you to do really crazy stuff like, I'll take this workbook and I'll make it launch itself into to, to the internet and then email itself to such and such person and then I'll grab that person, weird stuff like that. So I do stuff like that. So this book is basically trying to teach people how not to do that, but how to think like that. That's most, fucking badass. Most books like this basically just give you a list of, here's how to do this. And you read through it and like, okay, that's fine. Then you, you put it on the shelf. This book tells, tells you how to be a guru, teaches you how to be the guru, kind of passing that on. So that's one of them I'm doing on. And then I'm working on, an, I told you about the RV one, which is in the process. And then the other one, which will probably get me killed, maybe. <laughs> If the one, if the one about how to overthrow the government doesn't get me killed, well, this one probably will. So I'm going to write one called the history and future of bull. Why the hell do you get to do that? You're a white dude. Even if you do have big lips, you have no right to write a book like that. You don't know anything about my black culture. <laughs> one reason I started thinking about this is a few years ago, I was reading the newspaper. You know those things that come in the and they throw on your sometimes. I don't know if you guys. Are you familiar with the newspaper, what those are? Uh, with the black and white pictures? Yeah, the black and white pictures that come sometimes on your doorstep. So anyhow, a few years back when I was reading those still, I was reading this article and this lady, she was supposed to be a Native American. She was talking about how she hated white people and how she wished she could get the country back like it was before all the white people got here when the Indians were riding bear back on horses through, through the woods. I'm thinking, lady, you have no idea what you're talking about. There were no horses in America until... The Spaniards, you, your, your relatives, brought them here in the 1400s. Oh, I didn't know that. What? Yeah, there were no horses here in, in America. So Indians weren't riding bareback. Probably the most they had is those uh, alpacas, the things that spit at you, you know, look like camels or whatever. Oh, yeah. That's, that's all they had. They did not, that and bison, and I don't think the Indians really rode on bison. Well, they didn't kill them. So my point is that I want to be as unbiased as possible you can't be on like if i wrote a history of the white people it probably wouldn't be unbiased because it's hard to disconnect myself from that if you wrote a history of the mexican people yeah it would be probably informative but you probably couldn't be as critical as you should be because that's your background mm -hmm. or about white people it probably wouldn't be as critical as it would be so i want to do this because it's going to be very very hopefully non-biased now i'm sure people can will be able to criticize it here and there that's fine they should but at least it will give some kind of background as to how it happened. Like, for example, Roots. Remember this show? You're probably too young to see this. Long time ago. 
they did a remake, I think, for a while. I think Beyonce was in it, and she was dancing half naked. No, that was some other show. But anyhow. Oh, damn. I want to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> so Roots is a show about the supposedly, supposedly about slavery and how it started. And it's a good show, actually. I think it's a miniseries. But the problem being is they have this concept where basically they have these European ship that pulls up to port there in Africa. All these white people get out and they basically just run into the shore and run in the jungle and just get that one, get this one, get that one. Get... That's not how it worked. There was already a slave trade going on for, for hundreds of years before the white Europeans ever got there. Actually, they're, they're most of them were Spanish Europeans. They ever got there and got these people. So all they do is they had to pull up the shore and there was already a market there. Hey, we're selling these people. And they, it was fellow black people selling fellow black people. So I want to I want to address all these misconceptions and uh, some of the realities of what went on. Honestly, black people have every right to America as anybody else that's here. They helped build this country against their will even. And I really wish we get to a point when instead of this saying, this isn't my country, they start saying, oh, damn, this is my country and I want a part of it. I want to get them to there. I don't want them to get to the point where they say, I want nothing to do with this country. I hate this country. Look, the, the white cops put knees on people and kill them, which, which they just did there in Minneapolis. Did you notice though? There's a there's an Asian guy standing there in the front holding people back. Did you see? Yes, that? he looked like, like Bobby Lee. You're focusing on the whole white dude guy. Yes, he's bad, and it's bad. That, but how about the Asian guy that's standing there in front, telling no, no, can't get back. Stay back, stay back. Tell man coming. Tell man. <laughs> We're not focusing on him at all. I mean, oh. Isn't he part of the? Isn't he part of the people of color group? Yeah. But how come he gets a pass? And he was letting it go on. I mean, if I was a cop and I seen my fellow cop going. Dude, he's almost dead. You need to get your knee off him. I would be, I'd be engaged. I wouldn't need the crowd to tell me if I had my own conscience. But he For just sure. letting it happen. Even while people were telling him, hey, he's not even moving. Don't you see he's probably dead? He just stood there, stay back, stay back. And uh, I want to address all of this. I want to address the whole gamut of, of black history and black culture and how we got to the point we did and KKK and how that came into our, we talked about this before, how the KKK was started by the Democratic Party, not to get mm -hmm. too, and how Malcolm X said, if you vote for a Dem did you read this video? How Malcolm X in 1964 said, if any black person votes for the Democratic Party, they're, they're a chump and a traitor to their race. Whoa, I had yeah, no that's idea. That's crazy shit. Yeah, nobody sees that video. I never knew anything about it. When I was in school, they taught that all white people were awful and we were, enslaving all the black people were horrible blah blah well no wonder you, if you always hear that all your life you're gonna hate white people i'd hate them too that's a very good point yeah but there's actually an ideology and i'm, I'm, I'm trying to even separate yourself just from the democrats party but there's an ideology that that has existed in not just white people but hispanic people which i don't know do you consider hispanic people white people or not um you know actually some of them because like i don't know like I know some Hispanics that grow up with a, you know, Mexican family and they don't know Spanish. Is it their behavior or their, their color of their skin that makes them more white than Hispanic? Which one is it? I say the behavior. Okay. So when, so when Biden says you ain't black unless you vote for him, it's because their behavior then? Was he half right? I think so. Yeah. I mean. I think he was half right by saying that? I mean, I, I really don't know. Because that caught me off guard. I was like, did he really just say that? You know, <laughs> That's crazy. And so I was wondering, because the, the, the accusation all the time, since we're still talking about the history and future of black people, I was always wondering, how did this happen? How did the Democrats, here you have the Republican Party back in the 1800s, who basically freed all the slaves, and proclamation of emancipation, all this stuff that went on. We're told that at some point, the party switched places, that the Republicans are now for the rich white guy. And it looks like that on the surface. It looks like on the surface the Republicans are for the rich white guy and the Democrats are for the poor, downtrodden minority. So I wondered, when did this actually happen? Because we know for a fact that the Democrats created the KKK and the Jim Crow laws, which say, you know, white people over here and black people over here. That's what Jim Crow laws were. They created both those things back in the late 1800s. So I've been told there's a switch in the party. So I went back and I said, when, it, when was it? Was it in the 60s? No, it wasn't in the 60s because Lyndon Baines Johnson was the president then. He's a, he's a Democrat. And he was still using the N-word about black people. And like wow. I said, Malcolm X said, if you vote for him, that's back in 1964, then you're worse than a traitor. And he said that there's no such thing as a Dixiecrat. They're all Democrats. So he was against them. So 
So I'm thinking, well, it had it been after 1964, so I'm thinking, where, where was this change? And there was not a change. What I see is when I went back in history, uh, 1930s is when it happened. When FDR, the, you remember the guy with polio and has his wheelchair bound president? You familiar uh, with that? I, I don't. Okay, well, he's in World War II, the only president that served 16 years. Holy fuck. Yeah, he was the only president that served 16. This is before they had the law, basically, he can only serve eight years total. He served 16 years during World War II. Um, basically, because of the Great Depression that was going on then, he was able to push through all kinds of crazy stuff. What he found out is that if he helped black people by giving them free stuff, they would vote for him. Mm. When it happened, 1930s, because before that, from the 1800s to the 1930s, black people voted predominantly Republican, and they voted, and they ran in office as senators and congressmen, because there were congressmen before the 1930s, black ones, they were always Republican. So in the 1930s, the, because of FDR, the black people started changing over and started supporting Democrats. So from the 1930s on to the present day, black people vote Democrat, even though the Democrats have historically been the ones that have depressed them and passed dumb shit that hurts them. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. So I want to write about that. And we'll be, well, they switch parties. They have it. They're, they have it. Yes, it's true that the Republicans treat people. What it is, they treat people all the same. They treat you just as a person. And therefore, since they don't appeal to your Hispanicness, and they don't appeal to your blackness, they don't appeal to, they don't say, we need to make laws for, for short people. We need to make laws for left-handed people. Instead, they say, we need to make laws for Americans. It looks like they don't care about you. And I'm not trying to tout Republicanism. I'm just trying to talk, tout the ideology change. I don't care what you call it. There's two, mm -hmm. two, two groups of people. One group of people that exploit you and manipulate you, and other people that try to treat you with the same dignity they treat everybody else. They don't give you any kind of extra special pass or anything like that. If you succeed, you do. If you don't, you don't. And that's how it should be, you know? Right. So this is the, this is the background of the book that I'm going to write, and I don't know how it's going to come out and how it's going to be received. Maybe it'll flop, or maybe I'll get killed, or maybe I'll be on the, with the Black, Black Panthers out there. <laughs> Hiding in the forest. <laughs> or or to taking the tokes with them, I guess. <laughs> This book, you sure you ain't black? Look at them big ass lips. Them lips is bigger than mine. Hey, they're about to execute you, and they see your <laughs> lips. They're like, "Yo, man, he's one of oh. us. He's an albino." <laughs> albino. I gotta curl my hair up a little bit. Hey, that reminds you of um, this fucking audio of, of Biden. I don't know if it's real, but it sounded like him, and he was saying like, "I, I have blonde hairs." Oh no, dude, that is real. Yeah, that was, he's a lifeguard. He says a lifeguard at a pool, and that is creepy. So he's a lifeguard at a pool, and he said that the kids would. The, he was used to people acting like roaches. It's weird. It's a weird comment because they were yes. all, and that they that when his legs would be wet and from the pool, they would come up there and rub on his legs, see the white, you know, hair coming back, the blonde hair. Like that's a creep, and he liked it. Kids have always sitting in his lap, and he has no problem with kids sitting in his lap. Yes, he, he even said, I love children sitting on my lap, like something yeah, like yeah. that. Freak. Dude, I'm I was like... a politician since he's 26 years old. He's, ne he's done nothing else but be a politician. Wow, so he don't know what it's like to be a normal person, right? Yeah, have you ever worked at... I think everybody should start out working at a fast food place, just because that's, that's the most shitty-ass job you can get. You know, when a guy comes to drive through, it's all backed up. We need 15 bags of fries. You're like, oh, shit, I, I can't drop any more fries. You know, it's a, a stupid-ass job, but it gets you to learn chaos. And I had nothing. My first job was Burger King. And I remember the drunks coming through, like, in the middle of the night going, I want a Big Mac. Sir, this isn't McDonald's. It's Burger King. You better give me a effing Big Mac. I'll come through this window and shoot you. <laughs> That's what you need. You need to learn what life is be about instead of shelter yourself. Or people throw a burger at you. I said extra pickles. <laughs> Wanting to kill you over not enough ketchup packets. Yeah. Come in here, shoot you. Give me some extra ketchup. And uh, I see some people freak out, man. Like at in the videos, like the drive through windows, people like try and come in and beat the person up or some shit. Like, goddamn. Yeah, that's an animal. They need to learn how to act civil. For sure. Still talking about the, the book, if you notice, you ever go back through and watch some of the protests that happened in the 60s, the civil rights protests, it's odd because all the black people are dressed in 
the, they have their shirt collars on, and a lot of them ties. They're walking on the streets, you know, they're protesting. They're being interviewed, and they speak proper English. Thing. Yo, man, I said my fuck damn damn man. None of that stuff's going on at all. <laughs> when did we go from where? I don't. I mean, I don't care that obviously they're not talking white. They're just talking English. But when do we go from there to where we are to a lot of not not everybody? Because I have I have more black people I know who speak proper English and better articulation than I do even. So I'm not trying to say black people all. But where did we get this group? And there's also a group of white people, but where do we get this major group that's being that's being presented to us as the typical black person? Whether it is or not, that's what's being presented to us. How did that happen? Yeah, and I heard a, a you know, like um, you know, if, like black people. I see like posts on Facebook, you know, people sharing, but it said some something about stop shaming black people for speaking proper English. Like they, they shame them saying you're acting white or something like that. Yeah. I think where it happened is at some point in history, and probably it was during the age of rap, so I'd say early 80s, where it was uncool to sound like a white person. So you had to come with your own dialect. And it was rebellious. And so I was like, man, you ain't messing. It's that kind of stuff. And so now if you try to sound anything like articulate, you sound stupid. Yeah, I could totally see that with the rap. Yeah, it's a rebellion. It's a rebellion. That makes a lot of sense. And you got to know your audience too. I mean, I'm sure you talk differently around your friends than, than you would if you were on a podcast or in an interview. Okay, I get that. But when you can't even make the distinction, you can't because you only speak one, you know, slang, then you got a problem. You're not going to really be successful in the world because nobody's going to follow that very yeah. long. You just got to know how to act around people, you know, like, when I'm with my friends, I'm like, hey, what's up, fucker? Or like, hey, what up, <laughs> you know? But if I'm at work, I'm not going to be like that. I'll be like, hey, how's it going? Hey, you know. Just, you come, in, come in and say to your mom, punch her in the arm. Yo, what's up, homie? Your mom. What's for dinner, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to know your audience. And that's all I'm asking. I'm saying, when did it happen where now we no longer even know our audience? So, that's true. And I really think it has to do with the fact that there's a rebellion against the so-called white culture. Because you listen, like, if you go back and listen to, like, Malcolm X speaking, he's very articulate. So, yeah, huh? Yeah, that's back in the 60s. And, like, yeah, man, there's some crazy shit going on, man. Even uh, right here in the next town over in Phoenix, Arizona, there was a huge protest. I mean, there was no rioting or looting. I mean, they just, you know, got together and walked the streets. And I'm like, that's how it should be right there, you know? Yeah. Well, and also, I mean... Somebody's dying right now, whether it's a white person, black person, who, Chinese person, whatever. Somebody's dying right now at a cop bus gone bad, you know. And maybe it was precipitated by the person. I don't know. I'm not definitely the, the, the George Floyd. I don't even know what happened there. I can't tell. They said he was, was resisting, then he wasn't resisting. E even so, it doesn't give them right to sit there and kill that guy by holding his. It was obvious that he wasn't going to resist. Mm -hmm. Or. Or if you did, you know, fine, shoot him, tase him, whatever, but holding him down by your knee. But responding to it by burning down your city, that's the reason why companies won't build up in so-called ghettos because every, they have to run the risk of people burning it down or destroying their property. Like I said, they have a, one, a list of 100 different properties, Target and all these liquor stores. There was a video of a, a black dude who owned a, saved up his life savings and had a bar in that area over there in Minneapolis. And they destroyed it and burned it down. He's like, all my life savings are gone. I can't do anything else. And he was crying on, on video. Oh, Why? my God. Because I think what happens is a lot of these people that are doing this, they don't even know what's really going on. Like, yeah, they, we're going to get back. And they say, hey, they call up the friends, whatever. Hey, you're going to go downtown. We're going to get as close as we can to the right and go do some shit. You want to go do some shit with me, man? Yeah, let's go. It isn't really about anything. They just want to be part of that, you know? Be different as legitimate. Like I said, if you're going to target the offenders, why didn't you first target the police precinct? Why did you burn down all these businesses that had nothing to do with it instead of targeting the police precinct from the get-go? I would actually kind of respect that, even though it's still scary, you know, because mm -hmm. Book of the Revolution, this book here, yeah. prepared for what you want to do. If, I mean, if you want to go through with it, you got to be prepared for it because it, it could be in badly for you. You and all the people that are going to join you could end badly. There's consequences for your own actions. 
if you're if you're willing to do it, I mean, look what happened. All the uh, people in the revolution just to, that signed the Declaration of Independence. If you go back and look at their history, a lot of them were died penniless. A lot of them were hung later on. They were hunted down by the English later on. Damn. The story that we have that you know we read our history books and we had George Washington and all these people as great little as if they lived their lives happily ever after after that they didn't. They got hunted down because imagine you're the leading authority, the English, the British. And yeah, like kicked your, the, you got your butts kicked. Well, we're going to have to get uh, retribution somehow. When you aren't looking, we're going to come get you in the middle of the night. And that's exactly what they did to a lot of these guys. Fuck, I had no idea that happened. That's Yeah, that's well, we're not taught anything anymore. You should be a teacher, bro. History. Yeah, I'll probably get kicked out. You can't say that, pansy. Just put a disclaimer sticker on your door. Probably. On my forehead, probably. <laughs> it comes out of my mouth. Just put a viewer discretion advised or yeah. listener yes. discretion. Yeah. If you're within six feet of me, you might hear something offensive. <laughs> but I mean, to get away. I wish I wish schools did teach that. You know, um, like when I was in high school, uh, there was this one teacher, a history teacher, and that's when I started learning more about like what's really going on. Like he started teaching about Christopher Christopher Columbus. But he started teaching about what really happened instead of him discovering America, you know. He Oops, started, he accidentally found it, yeah. Yeah, he started talking about how the natives, how they killed them off and, you know, um, destroyed their, like, religion and just replace it. And, well, actually, that, and then just, I'm going to correct you a little bit because here's how it happened. Because he, he kept a journal. He actually has a journal, Christopher Columbus. I read the whole thing. Whoa. Yeah, I read the whole thing. So... Here he is, like you said, he, did, he wasn't looking for America, he was looking for India. So what happened during this time is, is the Muslims shut down the Mediterranean, that little water that goes right there between uh, Italy and all the way down to, to Egypt and all that stuff. It's, the Muslims shut that down. They wouldn't allow anybody to go through there unless they paid a ransom. And so the Europeans said, well, we gotta find a different way to get to India where all our spices are. So instead his plan was to go around and come back the other side. So when he found, found actually it's Dominican Republic where he landed first. He never landed on mainland in uh, America, by the way, Mr. Columbus, people might not know that. So he came, he founded, and he thought he was in India. So he called them Indians. And he was very compassionate and tried to say, you know, we need to make sure his people were trading, trading the Indians for dumb shit, like little beads for large amounts of gold and everything else. And he said, you need to trade them fairly. Damn. Damn. Who did all that shit. What was that? my other point I was going to get at? He died penniless. Christopher Columbus died penniless. So, but he didn't replace it. It was mainly the people who came after. Cortez and all those people who came after. Ponce de Leon. Yeah, it's those. Christopher Columbus Holy. didn't kill any people directly. I, I didn't know that. Holy shit. No, he didn't. No, he unwittingly may have brought diseases, but he didn't say, hey, let's go and wipe out these Indians and steal all their gold. But Ponce de Leon and Cortez and some of these other guys later on, Magellan and all these, I'm not saying which ones, but you have to look it up. These are the guys that said, let's look for the seven cities of gold and we'll take it by force. And they brought militaries with them. Holy fuck. So he was looking for a way to India to get spices. Also, he was just legit look like exploring, but the other guys went to conquer. Yeah, once they found there's a new land full of potentialities, they went to conquer and get pieces of that for... Because obviously here in America, the first city founded was uh, St. Saint Augustine, Florida. If you know, you might know. That's the very is, first founded. Is that where there's like a fort in yeah. like a bay and there's like, they were like torture people and have slaves there and stuff like that? Yeah. This, this, we talked about this in the previous show. I don't want to go launch into too much, but the Spanish and the Portuguese were the ones for 14, for, for in 1400s until the 1600s were coming to the new world. That's the reason why South America is full of nothing but uh, Spanish and, and Brazilian and Portuguese, because there were no English going there at all. No French, no body, just the Spanish. It wasn't until the 1600s that the English came in Jamestown, Virginia. So there's 200 year gap there that we're not often taught about. Wow. Native Americans. 200 years is a lot of time to do some damage. Fuck yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened. I'm not letting, obviously, Columbus off the hook. He obviously unwittingly brought diseases to him, but he didn't set out to conquer them. 
Ponce de Leon and some of those other ones did set out to conquer them. And take, off, and take it back to England. Or not England, Spain. I'm telling you, man, should be a teacher, bro. Yeah, but even if, even if you were, that gets drowned out. You'll get banned and you'll get deplatformed. You can't teach this. <laughs> it's material. Here's the switching parties. Post it on that, uh, fuck, what was that website you just said? Uh, Parlor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully what I do, like, you listen to my one, or my uh, one podcast. When I write books like this and the other one, they call it multi-genre. So most people who write books will write books about, you know, romance novels or whatever. The latest romance novel, and he went up to her knee and started rubbing on her leg and her, she, her back of her hair tingled. You know, that shit. Stuff like that. I don't write anything like that. All my books I write are completely different kind of books, which is not really a good method. People will say, you, you're never going to be known as anything. You're never going to be known as a history writer or the, or the political writer or the romance writer. You, you have all the, but my hope is that I write all these books and in the future they'll, they'll outlive me and people will say, well, this guy wrote about all kinds of cool stuff and it was all connected together. You know, most, most likely after I'm dead, which is fine, but that's what I'm and dude, and I think that that's one of the things I like about that. It's it's like a, a variety pack, you know what I mean? And it sh really shows how much talent you really have because it shows that you could write about all these completely different things and still do very well at it instead of just focusing on one genre or something, you know? Thank you. And I think that every, everything's connected together. Like the universe book that you read, obviously the one, the main one you read, it shows that everything is connected together. And if we ignore and compartmentalize, like sometimes I'll talk about, and I don't want to get too far in this because I'll upset some of your listeners maybe, but one of the premises right now is for the COVID thing and covering your faces, we got to save lives. We got to, okay, so there are 100,000 people in the United States who died, which is a significant amount. But again, every year, 15 million, over 15 million babies die in the United States. Lives lost. Lives of pe people. Humans that don't exist. Well, that's different, people will tell me. That's not the same thing. Well, yeah, if your premise is saving human lives, it is the same thing. So this is the reason I'm talking about connectivity. We're talking about what's your premise. If your premise is about saving lives, then what about all the people who die in car accidents? What about all the people who die from having too much cholesterol and we need to ban Big Macs, you know? Mm -hmm. You're not right. You've got some other kind of agenda. It's not about really saving lives. There's something else. And that's my question. What is your premise for real? So, and that's what these books are about, all the connectivity of everything that connects itself together. Whether it's, whether it's how to overthrow a government or how humans interact with each other or how you have met, uh, religious cults or how we see the universe, they're all connected together. And that's, and, and the next one, how, how, how black, how all the black stuff fits in. Why did black people never leave Africa? Why did, why did they get taken by the Dutch and the French and the Europeans and the Spanish and then spread out to the world? Why didn't they have their own exploration ships? You know, they suppose we were told they've been here longer than everybody else. The first man was supposed to be in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if they're the most advanced human culture, then why are they seem to be the most backward human culture now, today? I hate to say it, but it's true. They seem to be the most backward human culture. Damn, I never thought of it that way, about them having their own ships and traveling. Yeah, why didn't they have them? They, they were supposed to be, I mean, suppose we, if we... You're technically, you're, according to them, you're white too because you were raised in, your background is from Europe, you were Spanish. So suppose mm -hmm. the history, anthropology, science, black people were the original humans and they spread out from there and spread out and spread out and spread out. So why aren't they more advanced than you? Somehow you learned how to build ships and guns and everything else before they did, why? Well, because white people held them down. No, long before white people even came to Africa and knew it existed, they had many opportunities to, to do all this stuff. Why didn't they? Now, unfortunately, some people's explanation is because, well, that's because they just can't think those thoughts. They're not as smart as other people. I think that's bullshit, first of all. Just before anybody claims I'm claiming that, that's bullshit. There has to be some other example because I've seen too many black people from various cultures that are smarter than anybody else you can think of. Mm -hmm. But we, get if, we do need to figure out why it was, what kept them from advancing out into the world and becoming dominant. Yeah, like, that's continent full of black people, really. There's other continents full of Spanish people. There's other continents full of English people. There's other continents full of French people, even Asian people. But why didn't the black people sp spread out? Dude, that's crazy. I never thought about that. Holy shit.
that'll be part of the book. So it should be a book that everybody's interested in, whether you're black or white. So look for it in hopefully in 2021. If we all live long enough and don't get killed by murder hornets or whatever next coming down the line. <laughs> murder hornets with lasers <laughs> instead of stingers. Yes. And um, yeah, man, great stuff. And uh, so uh, where can people find your books, uh, your website? You can find it at roderickey.com or you can find it at Amazon to put Roderick Edwards in there and it should pop up. And I definitely will also... Oh, I do big lips. <laughs> also definitely want to check out your uh, PVE. I still got to check that out. Yeah, PVE. So I won't tell you what it means on purpose because that'll give away from the book. Basically, and it's getting ready to be put in an audio format. Basically, it's a story about a guy. It's one of my first books. I call it a throwaway book, but actually I'm looking back at it and I kind of like it. It's one of my first books I did that I recommend any author do is create a book that's not going to be, oh, this is going to be my best book, my my golden book. No, create a book that's just basically thoughts that you plan to never make any money from. It's just, you're just going to learn how to format. You're going to learn how to write. You're going to learn how to, and then publish it, go through the whole process. And so PVE is about uh, basically a guy who wakes up with amnesia on a planet. Uh, I guess he's on a planet. He doesn't know where he is, but he's on some place where there's dinosaurs and stuff. He's like, damn, and he doesn't know who he is. He's the only other human on there and he has to figure out how to survive through all this stuff. And so it's basically, he journals his life all these things that happened to him, you know, befriend some dino dinosaurs and, and get some killed while him and him and the designer dinosaur are going through the jungle. He cries because he killed the dinosaur and all this stuff. <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff goes on this, this uh, story. Killed the dodo bird and ate him. Dodo bird, bird and ate it raw. Ate his own poop and got sick. <laughs> ate his own poop, got sick. Figured out he could something with the poop. <laughs> background once you once you read through the entire book which is the shortest book i have it's like 60 pages you'll see like aha now i get it but you have to wait till you get to the end and don't read to the end otherwise you'll ruin it read all the way through it you know oh now i get it don't cheat <laughs> no cheating i'll be watching i'll be watching i got i got bugs and stuff now <laughs> you know, white people just so you know we have access to things that all other people from other colors don't have we have like little spy cameras in all your houses we know what the hell you're doing all the time. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, yeah. White? Yeah, okay. That's a, that's I've got a white person meeting later on. I gotta make it run. We all get together in a hidden place that you guys don't know about. And we talk about how we're gonna take over the world. Take over the, the world it, it, little cameras here and in uh, mayonnaise jars and stuff. Yes, one IKEA store at the time. <laughs> the most white store you can go to, IKEA. You know, I've never been to one. I haven't been inside one. I just drive by them and see all these white people going in and out. I'm going, this is the best deal ever. I paid $4,000 for this piece of wood. <laughs> really? They don't know how to put it together. <laughs> yes. Instructions are all in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Well, it's been great talking to you again, man. Like I say, you too. it's always a great convo with you, man. All right. We'll have to do one with, uh, we'll plug them here. The Drew World Order at some point. Hey, for sure, man. I'm still waiting on Drew, man. Yeah. Well, right. we'll have to fucking harass him. Yo, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Quick, man up, you little pansy. <laughs> oh, damn, I got, you're probably going to get, you probably won't even be able to post this now. You'll probably get banned as soon as you upload it. I'll get another three-day ban. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. All right. Thank you, man. Cool. Peace. Peace.